and the time is still now. I want you to 
Come on, let's bless the Lord this morning. For oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We've decided that we're going to be glad in it. Come on, let's bless the Lord right now. Praise God for praise team. Hope that you are enjoying yourself this morning. Our worship environment. This morning we want to share with you from the Gospel of John. fifth chapter and we want to start at the first verse very familiar story very familiar story fifth chapter the first verse it says after this there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem now there at Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, the dust, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. And whosoever then, first after the troubling of the water stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity, 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I was coming, another stepped down before me. And Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. All praise the name of God with us. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you so very much for this time that you have blessed us. We thank you for this day. God, we know that you know all about it. You know all about our life. You know about our ups. And you know about our downs. You know about our mind, our body, and our soul. And this morning, we need you to impart some of your wisdom, your knowledge, with all our getting, allow us to get understanding from your word this morning. For we realize that unless we're able to touch the very hem of your garment and you release this virtue to us, we would be lost. So now if you lead us, we'll be led. And if you feed us, We'll be fed. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 The sixth verse, Jesus said, Will thou be made whole? Praise the name of God. Will thou? be made whole. Will thou be made whole? Praise the name of God. 
We want to talk this morning from a subject anointed to prosper. Anointed to prosper. This story that we read to you this morning, as I said earlier, very familiar story. Many of us that have been in church, around church, through church, <laughs> in the parking lot of the church, in the back of the church, counting money in the church, practicing in the church, having programs in the church, has probably heard this story. So I'm not going to come and even portray myself as an expert on these scriptures today. Um, many of us, and I've heard many uh, messages growing up pertaining to this very story. Heard a lot of good points, a lot of good preaching, and I realize that when we speak on scriptures and God gives us understanding, our understanding allows us to interpret the scripture according to our mind, according to our mentality and according to our culture. Interpretation can definitely be different than revelation. And revelation is different than impartation. But revelation itself is a lot of times beyond our mind. So it is to have the mind of Christ when you begin to study the word of God. For the Bible says, let the mind that is in Christ also be in you, also be in us. And so when we begin to study, um, we don't always have to say anything other than what the word says. But sometimes making that plain, um, as plain as we try to make it, um, sometimes it goes over our head. And sometimes we miss some very important points. Reading the Bible is totally different than studying the Bible. For the Bible makes it very plain that we must Study the word to show our self-approval unto God that we need not be ashamed of when we are talking about the word of God. In this story, it, it catches my eye because at the beginning of the chapter, it starts out with a word called, says, after. It says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. The very thing that first caught my attention was that, why is it starting in this chapter and saying, after what? After what? After what? And so, we go back to the fourth chapter of John, and we eavesdrop in on the whereabouts of Jesus. Because I wanted to know what was going on before this. Because <laughs> it says after this. And eavesdropping on the whereabouts of Jesus, we found out that he was uh, in a place that he actually performed his first miracle. Before, years before, 
when he turned water into wine. And we also found out that he had gone through that city still performing miracles. Jesus was on a mission and he wasn't going to let anything stop him from accomplishing that mission. We found out that this was the time that he talked to the woman at the well and prophesied to her to where she knew that he was a prophet. Because some of the things that he told her, he, she knew that he could not have known unless he had a discerning spirit from God. And we find out that he healed a man's son just by speaking it into existence. And even as the man was acquiring, when his son got healed, when he looked at the time, he realized the time that his son got healed was the same time that Jesus had spoken. My God. I'm trying to tell you something because I, I believe that the fourth chapter was only setting us up for what Jesus was really about to do. Hmm. Because by the time he made it to Jerusalem and he went up to the pool of Bethesda, this was a place that people that was lame, blind, halted. They were there, withering away. And the Bible declares that they were waiting on the water in the pool to be anointed, to be blessed, to be moved by an angel. It makes it very plain that the angel came down a certain season in the pool. Now that got caught me right there because it didn't tell us what time. It didn't tell us what time, you know. Um, it said a certain season, <laughs> the angel, so nobody could know when he was coming. When the angel was going to show up, but you just got to be ready <laughs> when the water is trouble. Yeah, when the water is trouble. It is kind of hard uh, to tell someone that they are to prosper and God wants them to prosper when they have so many obstacles and hurdles in front of them. Oh, it's easy to say that when everything is going good in your life. Praise the name of God. But, but how do you minister to people that they have not grown up like you. Praise the name of God. They, they, they have been dealt a bad hand. And even if you tell the truth yourself. And you look at their life. You thank God for how you came up. You don't even want to trade places with them. But yet we'll stand strong and tell them they are to prosper. And when we are saying that God wants us to prosper, we are actually telling the truth because we are saying what the word of God is saying. But just saying it is not always enough. God wants us to come to the place of being able to show. Wow, can I say that again? Hey, 
God wants us to come to the place to be able to show people that they can prosper. Praise the name of God. Now, now it's kind of hard to show folk that they can prosper and you don't know that you're prospering in your own self. See, because most people think prospering is all about material goods. Praise the name of God. Ah, but, 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 but there are many people that have a lot of material goods and can't do anything with it. Oh, Jesus. Ah, I mean, they got plenty of money and can't spend it. Why? Because they're on the bed of affliction. Praise the name of God. In the time that we live in now, one of the, the major sicknesses going around is not just COVID-19. Uh, praise the name of God. It, it's called dementia. It's called uh, Alzheimer's. You know, there are people that have piled up many things in their barns uh, uh, and just said, oh, I live a good life and they can't even remember yesterday. Mm. They're not what you have. That's not prospering. Praise. Even when we say, I, I always tell people, be careful when you say, well, I want to live a long life. Praise the name of God. But you, you ought to ask God to live a long, prosperous life in your right mind and your body still okay. Can I say that again? <laughs> you got to know what to ask God. Praise the name of God. Because there are many people that are getting older and we're living a long time, but we're not living to our fullest potential. Praise the name of God. Now, I do understand that when we get older, I mean, there are going to be some aches and pains. Praise the name of God. I, I, you know, I can't, I can't move like I used to move. I was playing basketball with my, my kids not long ago and, and, and trying to go up for a rebound. They, they done went up three times before I got off the ground the first. I just wait for them to come back down <laughs> and snatch the ball. <laughs> you know? Because I came, my mind said I could, but my body said uh, not so. Praise the name of God. You know, I, I remember when. Praise the name of God. And uh, so when, when we're in a place that we are withering away. And they're waiting for the angel. Now, the man said uh, that he didn't have anybody to help him get in the pool. After Jesus asked him, you know. The Bible declares that he had been there for 38 years. 38 years. And Jesus asked him, you know, how long? How long? And do you want to be made whole? You know? <laughs> can, 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 can you imagine this? If the man has been there 38 years, he has been in that position longer than the age of Jesus. Oh. He, he's been there longer than that. According to the scriptures, he's been there longer than the age of Jesus. Jesus hadn't even lived 38 years. So, so this man was in this position before Jesus was even born. I, I need y'all to catch that. Because, and now he said, when he tries to get in the pool, others get there before him. It, you know how, you know how we, we always say, what God got for you is for you. And what God got for me is for me. It, you know, uh, I, can, I, can I tell you this? It, it sounds like it was some social distancing going on back then. <laughs> it sounds like it was some, it sounds like it was some selfishness going on back then. It, it, it sounds like you do you and I'm gonna do me. Like it, it almost sounds like now. You know? You do you, I'm gonna do me. You know, uh, you take care of yours, I'm going to take, and, 
don't get closer. Look, I ain't really worried about your family. I'm not even. It's only when stuff hit close to home, then I'm worrying about it. You know, one of the greatest challenges of a pastor and being a leader now is that, guess what? Uh, we don't have that opportunity because people still call you as a leader. People still call me as a leader. And they really don't care. They don't care. What? 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 <laughs> you trying to give me a reason? Of, well, I don't find out that some people do give them a reason. No, no, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not. You know, and, and it almost sounds the same thing at this pool because in 38 years, you don't think anybody had enough compassion Compassion to help this man. I mean, if it's a guarantee that he was going to get healed, uh, you mean to tell me nobody couldn't put him in there? I mean, he's going to get healed and he's and he, he done. Can I not wait to the next season? He done been here 38 years. But do you understand? You know, some people don't really care about you being blessed. They'll take all the blessings for themselves. Praise the name of God. That's why I'm so glad that we don't serve a God like that. God does not have, he does not show partiality. God don't care what kind of title you got. God don't care what kind of degree you got. God don't care what kind of career or business you got. God don't care about anything. He don't show partiality. Praise the name of God. God. God said, listen, if you worship me, uh, you praise me. Praise the name of God. If you delight yourself in me, yeah, I'll give you the desires of your heart, but I need you to understand. It, it's still about time, place, and condition. It, it has to be because uh, with all this time, uh, even uh, Minister Greg said it would seem like he would have been able to inch his way up in 38 years himself. Praise the name of God. But that wasn't that that wasn't what he said. He said I didn't have anybody help me, and I need you to understand. We we have a lot a alarming rate of people that have transitioned out of this world. And we have tagged them with COVID-19. But I need you to understand, there was a lot of people over the last few years that have died, not just because of COVID-19, but they have died because nobody was checking on them. They have died because nobody went to see them. They, would die, they died because nobody gave them a helping hand because we're so busy social distancing. Do we not get it? Praise the name of God. Oh, this is supposed to be kingdom. We're supposed to be connected. How are we connected and everybody doing what they want to do? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Oh, wow. Okay. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. I, I can tell you what the Bible says. There's no reason for you to tell me that you love God and you treat your fellow man in any kind of way. Woo! Don't tell me you love God and you can't even show love to the people. Mm. It took Jesus to show up. Being that he was already in his mindset yeah, of healing. Jesus came. He said, listen, I ain't come to destroy the law. I come to fulfill it. In other words, I mean, now there are some things you think about the law that are not necessarily the law. So I come to allow you to understand it better. Now, before we be too judgmental on this guy that was there for 38 years, uh, and him there being in that impotent state and not being able to get to the pool when the water was troubled, uh, may I submit to you this morning that uh, I can't say about you, but I can all I can say about me. I know that I've been living long enough to, for 38 years at least. Uh, I've been stuck somewhere. 
<laughs> oh, the uh, people have been stuck for 38 years. You, you, you talking about him? But I'm saying we get stuck in our mentality. We get stuck in our culture. We and ain't nobody gonna change our mind. Ain't nobody. I mean, God wanna bless us. He wanna trouble the water. He wanna. He wanna do what God does best. Bring miracles. And guess what? We're so stuck in our traditions and how we used to do things and how we want things to be done. We're so stuck. Just like the Sadducees and Pharisees, we want to control everything. Like we know the law better than anybody else. You want to make sure everybody else living to the law. And, and they wasn't even able to live to it. Jesus came and met people where they were at. Some of us won't meet people at our front door. <laughs> you know? I mean, we, listen. Oh, so y'all acting like y'all don't have uh, cameras and stuff at your house now. You know? I mean, it's almost kind of like, you know, we call ID. you telling me you just don't, there are sometimes you see somebody, you just don't answer the phone. <laughs> oh, not right now. <laughs> huh? No, 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 no. So, so here it is. Before we be too judgmental, I am telling you. And, and, and because of what's going on in the world today, if we don't take a mirror and really look at ourselves and see, I know, I'm telling you, I have lived uh, uh, long enough to know that there were sometimes in my life I had to change my mind. No, no, I found out something different. It, it, does it amaze you about people that had never gone anywhere? Can tell you about every country in the world? <laughs> I mean, some people had left their state. You know? If you ain't ever left your state, how you gonna tell me what's going on and how much better it is somewhere else? Or like, me being from the country, you know, uh, the country in South Carolina, you know how many people I have heard uh, say to me, yeah, I had to leave. I had to leave. Wasn't nothing here. You know, I, I had to go and, and make a life for myself. And then I'm looking around. And I'm saying, this show look like a lot of people prospering to me around here. I, I didn't have to go anywhere. And God's doing pretty good in my life. <laughs> I got friends, I got people at the church. God doing real good in their life. They didn't have to leave. So why why you think you had to? You know? Listen, stuck. Stuck. He was there 38 years. So now Jesus asked the question. Do you want to be made whole? Because that's the first thing I need to know. Because that, that, that's one thing I'm learning. Some people want to remain where they are. Period. And, and when you understand that, there's no need to get upset. No need to be mad. When a person want to remain where they are. When they're comfortable, let them remain. Praise the name of God. You know? But that's why Jesus asked the question, do you want to be made whole? Now, when a man, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't say yes. He gave the reason of why he wasn't whole. Have you ever asked people questions and they don't ever answer your question? Or you ask people questions and they answer you with a question? That's not answering, that's not answering my question. Answering me with a question. Sometimes you just need a yes or no. That's all Jesus was looking for. Man said, now, uh, I've been here and every time. I don't have anybody when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. Say, while I'm coming, somebody else stepping in. Jesus just looked at him. And said, take that bed up 
and walk. All oh, praise the name of God. Why he said that, take thy bed up and walk. Because Jesus already knew his purpose. Jesus knew what Jesus' purpose was. And Jesus said that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have a life and have it more abundantly. So Jesus didn't have any more conversation concerning what the man wanted. Because now Jesus is looking and saying, well, you've been here for 38 years. And I've asked you the question. And you've given me your answer. So it seems to me you've been waiting to go to the wall. <laughs> well, how about I remove all your excuses? How about I give you a solution to your problem? How about I give you an answer to your question? You're saying you can't get to the wall. So how about if I bring the water to you? <laughs> because that's what Jesus did. Jesus said you trying to go to the water just like some of us say we are waiting on God and God is waiting on us you say you want a new job you say you want a new business you say you want a new career you say you want to go back to school you say you want to change your life. You say you waiting on God and God say I'm waiting on you. But if I need to come by and tell you that you've been anointed to prosper. First of all, I need to get in your mind. I need to touch your soul. I need to change the way you're looking at things. Praise the name of God. You don't know when that angel's going to come down and trouble the water. And you don't know if you got another 38 years to wait. As a matter of fact, I'm not even worried about that it's the Sabbath day. Praise the name of God. They can say I'm breaking all kind of laws. But I came by to tell you that I'm the son of man. I'm the son of David. I'm the son of God. I came by to tell you that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are my people. Hallelujah. I came by to tell you that they are one day that the government is going to be on my shoulder. They're going to call me wonderful counselor. Everlasting father. Mighty God. And prince of peace. I came to tell you that I've been anointed for a time such as this. But I can't do it all by myself. I came back to tell you that wherever you are, You've been anointed to prosper. Get up, rise up, and take your bed. What is the bed? The very thing that kept you down. The very thing that kept you comfortable. The very thing that kept you soothed. The very thing that put you in that comfort zone that you didn't want to move. It made you complacent. I'll pray the name of God. It made you content. I'll pray the name of God. But I came by the chair. I'm a God that will satisfy you. Yes, I will. I'm a God that told you that no matter what come up against you, hallelujah, you shall prevail. Hallelujah. Believe in me and I need you. Abide in me and I abide in you. I'll pray the name of God. Just give me your hand, baby, and I'll be 
where the Bible says the kingdom so abides and we must take it by force. I can't bother to tell you. Shut your feet. Gut up your loins. Breath with the righteousness. Shield of faith. Covenant of salvation. And the sword which is the word of God. Ride up and walk. Ride up and walk. that we got in this world. I just need you to know it because now, now you waiting and I'm waiting on you or pray the name of God. Anybody out there believe me that you've been anointed, you've been anointed, you ought to wave your hand and say thank you Jesus for anointing me.
Thank you for joining us today during the Grant Hill Missionary Baptist Church online worship experience. The service would not be a success without your prayers and support. If you would like to give to our ministry, please visit granthillbaptist.org forward slash donate to view our multiple giving options. We invite you to visit our website at granthillbaptist.org for inspiration, motivation, and more. Stay connected and Christ-centered with us 24-7 through our social media platforms, and be sure to sign up at our website to receive updates, announcements, and more. Be sure to join us next week for another powerful praise and worship experience right here at Grant Hill, all to the glory of God. Thank you for your prayers and support, and may God continue to richly bless you.